<laughs> you all ready? Yeah, okay. That sound okay? Yeah. All right, well, good morning, folks. On this beautiful, sunny day, we're here today to provide an update of the COVID-19 in the Murrumbidgee region. So we've got some really good news uh, to share with our communities today, uh, which is, again, we have had no new cases of COVID-19 patients today. Uh, which really means that we're seeing now a real slowing of the transmission across our community, which is fantastic news. We had one new case uh, about a week ago, but that case again was not a community transmission case. It was a return from overseas in quarantine in Sydney. This is actually all down to the good work that our people are doing right across our region. And I have to thank you all for staying at home it has been a really challenging time. We've had Easter, we've got Anzac Day coming up and we've had school holidays. But our rural communities have been absolutely superb in continuing this stay at home message over such a prolonged period of time. Today, I just wanted to talk about what we're continuing to do because there's a couple of messages that are really important for us to understand. The best news ever is that we've really increased testing over the last week. We're now up to over 3,000 people having come forward to be tested in the Murrumbidgee region, which is 550 tests in just one week. That will give us a much better picture about really how many people in the community have COVID-19 uh, for us to be able to then do better surveillance to uh, really help get rid of this we can get on top of COVID-19 if we continue over the next few weeks, as we've all been encouraged to do, our stay at home messaging, our social distancing and continuing our fantastic hygiene and washing our hands. So good news. Um, the increase in testing numbers has been a result of broadening the testing criteria, which has been really great. So just again, I just reiterate, anybody who has any respiratory symptoms, particularly that dry cough, uh, people who have got a runny nose, uh, people who've got respiratory symptoms, fever, please come forward. We are testing everybody. We have taken out now uh, that requirement for people to have returned from overseas or been in contact with a known COVID person. So what we need to do now is really increase our surveillance in the community for people who are suspected of having COVID-19 and any contacts and new cases that we have. So we're really beefing up our ability to do surveillance. And one of the things that you'll all see in our hospitals uh, now is that anybody coming through the front door, staff or visitor, will now be screened. Not only will they be screened and asked a number of questions and asked to sign uh, that that information is correct, we'll now also have a temperature test. So we commenced this at Wagga Base Hospital and Griffith Base Hospital uh, last Friday, where they're using infrared uh, equipment um, and again, we don't have to touch people, we don't have to get close to people, but every single person coming through that door, staff and visitor, will be tested. It is really important that we keep on top of potential vulnerable groups in the population. Um, and obviously keeping our staff healthy is super important so that we don't see outbreaks in hospitals the way that we saw uh, in Tasmania and in residential aged care facilities. Any health worker who has any symptom is required to have a test and is required to self-isolate and must be tested negative before they come back to work. Our staff have been absolutely superb. They walk around with little red stickers on their badges once they've been tested and every single shift we test people and we do a wellness check on them as well. They're doing an absolutely superb job. So that combination of increased testing, increased surveillance, uh, and identifying those vulnerable population groups in our region are really important now for us to keep that great work going. But I also want to reassure the community that whilst we've got good news in our case numbers, we have to keep the, cap the capacity in our hospitals. That's vital. We can't afford to become complacent now. We are continuing to do that really big work in our hospitals, massively increasing our ICU capability, rearranging our wards so that we've got respiratory capability for people who don't need ICU and ventilation, and also protecting residential aged care facilities. 
In the Murrumbidgee Local Health District, we actually have 16 multi-purpose services where we house residents, aged care residents. We also run four aged care facilities. We have to protect those residents. And again, we've seen in other parts of the country some disastrous results. I want to thank people who have families, uh, families who have people in residential aged care facilities. It's tough not being able to visit them, but that's actually the only way that we can keep our aged care residents safe. And if you have a look on our Facebook uh, site, you'll see that our staff have done some amazing things around connecting our residents with their families and friends. Uh, we've purchased iPads for all of our um, aged care facilities uh, to make sure that our residents have got the capability of learning some new skills uh, around social media and some of those apps that they're really having fun with. Uh, and finally, just in terms of our staff being prepared, again, we always have to be the best prepared we can. So we've been doing a lot of scenario testing so we've got teams and we're calling them the M team, that's the Murrumbidgee team, that go to every hospital and they run scenarios. We actually put people through the paces. What if you get a patient who can't breathe with COVID coming into your emergency department and we absolutely test it out through the whole scenario? It's critical that our staff are able to put on and take off their PPE perfectly every time. If they make a mistake, that's when, of course, we have safety issues for our staff. So they're doing a most amazing job and I really want to extend again my thanks to them. We're continuing to do work on uh, getting our virtual ward stood up uh, with our people with wearable devices, which won't only be for COVID patients, but it will be for people with respiratory illness generally. So once again, I just want to thank the community for your continued effort. Um, in this really challenging time. I really want to recognise that everybody is feeling a level of anxiety during this time. There are days, and we talk to most people, most people tell you they have good days, they have bad days. Yesterday, I opened an email with a big, bright, smiley face from one of our staff, and she said, Jill, how are you? Does anybody ever ask you how you're going? And I really want to say to people, that just made me feel so good. I can't explain the feeling of warmth that I got from just one person reaching out and asking me how I was. So everybody out there, please continue to connect with neighbours, with friends. We have to do it virtually, but we also need to consider our mental health and wellbeing during this time. Please connect, seek help, the Beyond Blue COVID page is absolutely amazing and simple to use. It's important we still can go out in the backyard and do our star jumps. We still can go for a walk with the dog, uh, so long as we adhere to the social distancing protocols. Uh, and we're all cooking now and gardening, uh, which is also really good for our well-being. So I want to thank the community again, and please look after yourselves. Thank you. Go to 